All right, welcome everyone. Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by. Welcome to another video, another tutorial. We're going to have an absolutely fun time. We're going to actually show you how you're going to create this beautiful boat painting along the harbor. We're going to have a little bit of some buildings, some architecture in here, gorgeous sailboats. We're going to have a few figures, distant boats, distant buildings. We're going to show you how to do this with the glazing technique. We have our schminky palette with all our standard colors. We're going to show you step by step how to create this painting. We're going to actually even create the drawing with our ruler. We're going to show you how you can use a ruler to get a really accurate representation of what you're looking at by just using some careful measurements in the very beginning of your painting. So join along here, learn some new things, put it to use in your watercolors. And if not, you can always just learn something new and then you continue on with the way you would like to do your watercolors. I always say you're the artist. You create your paintings the way you would like to paint them. Do things your way. Also learn some new things along the way. See if you can incorporate them into your work. And um, you never know. It might be something that uh, might give you like another boost uh, to get your paintings and your, um, your artwork looking better. And if not, you're still always looking for something new and interesting and something uh, that's going to um, give you a, a, an advantage when you're doing your artwork. I want your artwork to look great. Uh, that's my goal. Help everyone as well as myself as I work here with you. I'm getting better too. I'm getting better at my drawing and painting skills. So let's work together and uh, keep uh, moving forward. Enjoying the process. Enjoying uh, the journey of watercolor. All right. Let's uh, uh, get started. All right. So we just saw the finished painting. And um, we're going to cover all the steps we we did to, to get here to, to the finished painting and uh, a little then some. So the main thing here is um, once in a while I might change my approach on how I teach or um, create my YouTube um, tutorials. I know sometimes I might just go for the gusto and paint and uh, you know kind of describe what I'm doing as I'm going along and then sometimes I might go a little more into detail. So this time I'm going to be a little more detail orientated. And um, the first thing I wanted to do was um, uh, a ruler is a great thing to use. If you, you know, if you can kind of get used to using a ruler, it can really help a lot, especially if you kind of, if sometimes you struggle a little bit with design where you're not sure where the halfway point is on your paper or the one third point is on your paper, a ruler can really help out. We'll, we'll do measurements in this video. So I hope this might help. And if, if you find that this does help, you know, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section, say, Hey, Chris, you know what? Yes. This, the, the using the ruler ha, ha, is really helping me a lot with my, my uh, layout with my watercolor paintings and my drawings because that's important if, if you find that it helps you, helps you a lot please you know use use the ruler a little more and measurements and sometimes the measurements will get a, you know sometimes it will take a little bit of time to get used to kind of you know working with the ruler and getting back into the swing of things some of you might use rulers um for your work some of you might have used rulers in school um so it all depends on, so everyone's different. You know, you might be better off um, using whatever you feel is, you're the artist, you feel, you know, use whatever you feel is the best for you as far as when you're doing your layout and you're sketching and you're drawing of your paintings, you know, use whatever you feel comfortable with. Don't don't feel like you have to be locked into any method or technique or anything like that. I'm just going to share this this type of technique where maybe we'll, you, we'll, we'll rely on a ruler just a little bit more on this one. And we'll see how it works out and you'll try it and or maybe you'll just say nah i already know i don't like to do it and then you just maybe just watch or or just maybe you know you can paint along without having to use a ruler draw and paint along as as we go but let's just say the first thing we do is we say okay we're going to anticipate that our painting might turn out really good so let's have it set up so that we have a mat already a, a mat that we purchase out of store or online uh, this one happens to be um this is a uh, four and a half window by like a six and a quarter window, I guess that is. Um, let me get more accurate for you. So this is a four and a half window by a six and a half window. The actual frame size or the mat size, the outside dimensions of the mat is a 10 by 8. So this is a, a 10 by 8, 10 by 8 mat. 
and then again we said the window for the mat is a four and a half by six and a half inch opening window opening for the mat so this is kind of like a you kind of like a small this is a small size painting which but is really nice and these are great for you know um you know for gifts and things like that you can you can share your artwork and make smaller paintings and share them as gifts or you could you know just have these for you know maybe a you could have smaller paintings in certain areas of your home, let's say, if you want to put up some of your paintings in your home. So it's really fun to do like a smaller size format. But the, the main thing is, too, is always remember, if you have this mat size here, you can just increase your dimensions with your ruler. So if you want to make a larger painting just like this, you might even say, you know what, instead of going, uh, instead of going, let's say this, let's say instead of going four and a half, on the bottom measurement here, you could say, I'm going to go instead of four and a half, I'm going to go nine inches. And that would be double the size. So, or, or I should say, let me flip this over here. So that would be nine inches over here. So then you could say nine inches like this is this wide. And that will be double of what we're doing here right now. So if you want to make a larger painting just like this one, and you say, you know what, I, Chris, I don't think I really want to create a smaller painting like you're doing here. I want to go a little larger. I, I like painting a little larger. I have larger brushes, larger paper, whatever it is. You know, you just do what you like. Create your paintings any size you want. You can just keep increasing the size. You can go as large or small as you want. You can paint smaller than this too and make the paintings smaller if you want to shrink them down a little bit. Fine. But so a nine inch on the bottom would be double this size that we're doing right here, which is a um, four and a half inch. I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Four and a half, correct. So now we said this was six and a half. So for a six and a half, if you wanted to double the size of your painting, no problem. Six and a half times two, 6.5 times two is 13 inches. So this would be 13 inches here. And that would give you a 9 by 13 size window. And then your mat would be whatever size it works out to out here. And I'm sure you can probably purchase these mats that fit the 9 by 13 or 9 by 14. So really ideally if you can get the mat that you want and order a few of them of whatever sizes you want to paint. Maybe you want to have like two or three, two or three standard sizes you always work in. And you'll have your paper, your paper that's going to be able to accommodate your standard sizes you work in, maybe you work in two or three sizes. And then you just remember that, you know, once you have your, your mats purchased and you say, you know, I'm happy with those sizes and your paper fits fine, then you just do your, your dots in your corner of your mat. So you set your mat on your paper. You put four tiny dots in each of the corners like that. And then you just lift up your mat, like so, and you put that off to the side. And then what you do is you just want to go about uh, maybe like a half an inch or even, I would say half an inch beyond, half an inch beyond each of those dots in, in all directions. Half inch this way up higher, and then you go a half inch out this way. If you can imagine, I'm just, let me, let me zoom out here a little bit. I think I went a little bit too, okay, there, that's better. All right, so... I'll, I'll exaggerate this though. I'll make it a little darker so you can see. So this is the original dots that we had that are the actual inside corners of the mat window that we had. So we took our win mat when we took our mat and we said, okay, we want to make sure we you wouldn't make these dark dots like I'm doing because you don't want that to you don't want to see that when you're painting. But I'm doing it just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here on on the video. All right, so then you have your four corners, right? Those are your key points. You have to be, you, you have to go beyond these because when you put your mat on the paper, you, you want to have a little extra room to move your mat around and have some room to play with. You don't want to make your painting exactly this size of the window because then if there's a little bit of a problem where you had a smudge or something and you, you don't have any room to move your you know mat around. So that, that's all I wanted to mention on that. So, okay, you have your four corners where your mat window is then again you just go again half an inch larger than your your window opening of your mat 
and you just go half inch that way, half inch this way, and then you just you just expand it a half an inch in every direction of your rectangle. So you see how I do that? I just mark half inch this way over this way, then I go a half inch this way, like this, and I come up here and I say, okay, I want to go a half inch this way, larger, and then I want to go again a half inch larger up top. And that's going to be my actual area that you're going to want to paint in. So then you take your ruler, it can be any kind of ruler, and you just take it and you put your lines on the paper. So you just line up the two, the two hash marks you made, like that. You take your two hash marks over here, just like this, and you do that. And then you're, again, you're doing the larger size rectangle than your win window of your mat. And then you just come over here and do the same thing over here. You line up your two hash marks here with your ruler, one hash mark, two hash marks. Line your ruler up just like that, right on those hash marks, and go right across. And there you can kind of see you have a perfect rectangle, a half an inch larger on all sides of it, so that you're like this here now. So now you can kind of see how if you paint out to these outer edges here that we just created, you'll always have a little bit of room to play with and you can move the mat around like that and then set it just in the perfect spot you want and then and then you uh, set it down, trim your paper and put it in a frame. Now the actual extra mile, if you want to go that extra mile is, you can paint this uh, two inches larger in every direction if you want when you create your painting or three inches larger and then you can take your mat and put it down and you can move your mat and you'll have even more room to move your mat around and kind of see where you feel is that right spot where you say, oh yeah, right there looks perfect. I can set my mat right down there and then that's perfect. Then you tape it down and then you trim it and you're ready to frame. So I would say you're better off going way larger than this, what I'm doing here, but I'm kind of showing that it's real, does this make sense? It's real important that you absolutely go at least a half an inch larger than the window opening of your mat because you definitely want to have a little bit of room for play here when you go to f finish your um, painting and put your mat on and then trim your painting and put it in a frame. But again, like I said, if you go a lot extra larger, that's easy, that's fun, that's fine. Do it that way. This way you have extra room to do your adjustments if you want. That seems to work for me anyway. You let me know in the comment section what you think. So now we're ready to really start drawing. And I'll just take an eraser. And let me let me find my needed eraser. There it is. And I'll just try to erase those little dots that we made. Only because, again, we're going to make this a little larger. So, But I wanted to make those dots so that you can kind of see how the process works here. You definitely, I want you to see on camera here while I'm doing my video how I did everything like this here. Okay, so now we're we're fine. We're good. We just erase those dots out of there. And again, you would just make your dots very barely visible when you're doing it at, ho at home, just so you can see it, so that you know how you can m enlarge your rectangle out and expand your rectangle out in both directions like that, so that you have extra room when you're when you're doing your drawing and your painting. Okay. Now the second, and I've done these videos before like this, but I, I always want to do, once in a while, I'll do a refresher on this. I hope you don't mind. And um, next thing we're going to do, again, let's use our ruler. Let's not uh, kind of forget about our mission here. Right now we're trying to st keep strict with ourselves and say, you know what, if I want to get a more accurate and really good design of my painting, uh, let me use a ruler. You can't go wrong with using a ruler. I mean, this is how all things are designed in, like the the like let's say the world of like construction when they're when contractors are be creating beautiful and architects are creating beautiful buildings and they're building everything. They're using all dimensions and everything is all precisely uh, worked out with measurements with a ruler. So that's the, you can't go wrong with this. But once 
in a while, you can say, oh, I'm just going to go freehand and I don't want to worry about a ruler. Or you might say, most of the time I'm going to go freehand and just draw it as I see it. But once in a while, I will try to use a ruler and see how it works out. Chris said it works out pretty good. Might as well try it. So here we're, we're, with this painting, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to, I kind of see that this painting, I want to have the kind of the main mast of the of the boat that we have in the in the painting the prominent boat in the painting i want it to be in the center pretty much a little bit off center but not not quite perfect center so what i'll do is i'll i'll, I'll, I'll go maybe just halfway and i'll say okay this measures five and a half approximately five and a half inches so half of five and a half would be two and three quarters inches so you could make a center mark and say, okay, or you could just say, don't worry about that. The center mark, just say two and three quarters inches would be the center of this rectangle right now that we're working in. But I want to go a little bit left of center. So let me go to, and I don't know, I'm going to say two and a, I'm going to say two and a quarter. So I'm going to go two and a quarter inches. That's going to be my boat mast here. So I'm going a little bit off center. So I'll just erase this mark I made here in the center. So I'll just remember this is going to be my boat mast here, which is a little bit off center. Then I'm going to say the next thing I see is that the, um, the roofs of the buildings on the left side, that's going to be about halfway up the, you know, on the painting. So if I take my ruler and I say, okay, this is, seven and a half inches maybe you work with metric you can see oh, how many mil you know how many centimeters is this this is uh, about 18 centimeters so half of 18 centimeters is nine centimeters so if it works easier to work with centimeters or the standard american measurements you do whatever was comfortable for you or you could mix and match them if you like so i say that's the center point then of the, of the painting vertically so vertically so we got the vertical this way and the horizontal this way so the vertical halfway point is here and we just measured that and we said it was approximately nine centimeters or um standard measurement american standard is about three and a half inches like that okay so now um what we're going to do is we're going to take this and say our mast is almost to the top of the painting. So we'll start our mast here. We'll use our ruler. Why not use our ruler? Take our ruler and just make a straight line right down this way like this. And then maybe we'll make a second line just to make the mast a little bit thicker at the bottom like that. And that's our mast for our boat, which again, we figured out was just a little bit left of center of the, of the, the painting going across this way horizontally. It's a little bit left. That's center. It's a little left of center, the mast of the boat. Perfect. Okay, so now we have that. And then we said the halfway point between the top and the bottom is here. We have that. And then now what I'm going to say is let's make our building over here, which is a beautiful building along the um, harbor here in this painting. And we're just going to make an, a slight angled line upwards like this. And that'll be the first roof, cornice of the roof like this and then for the cornice you're just going to make an angle upwards like this kind of a soft angle like this so it's not going to be a steep angle like this and it's not going to be straight like this it's going to be a slight angle like this and that's how we get this line here and we'll go over to this point here and then the other the next building over from this building, the next building over is here. And it's gonna be pretty close right to the edge of the paper. And then we're also gonna have, so we'll put our vertical line there. And we could just do a lighter vertical line here, like this. Okay, and that's our next building up here, like that. And you don't have to be too precise with this. And then we're gonna make the cornice up here for this building facade and roof like this like that and all that really is is a tr almost like a little bit of a curved line here and then a straight line up here for the top of the roof 
So that's the parapets of the roof up top. This is the underside of the cornice of the of the facade of the building. And that gives you almost like, if you can imagine, that's almost just like a triangle if you look at it. So if you want to just kind of look at things as like basic shapes, you have a straight line here, which is your second building over, the tall building here. That's just a straight line all the way down your page, like that. And that's about two centimeters wide. So this building here is about two centimeters wide. Straight line all the way down the whole painting. Or if you're talking, it's about an inch wide for your standard, American standard measurements. And then if you can imagine, just at the very top, you have a triangle here. So all this is really is a triangle with a little bit of a curve to it. So if you can imagine, you could take it and make it a triangle up here. Like that, right? A triangle. But then you take the bottom part of the cornice of the and you just curve it a little bit like that. And that gives it more of a realistic look. Just like that. And that's, that's all we have for up here. Perfect. Then we say... We have our building here. Maybe we're going to have a balcony up here. Right about here, we're going to make a balcony. Let's just make a balcony. And all that is is basically a rectangle. Let's just make a rectangle here. You could think of that as like a um, tissue box or a, um, a brick. It looks kind of like a brick or a tissue box. Or that could look like a, um, a letter looks like the shape of a letter like a like a, or an envelope yeah it looks kind of like an envelope right pretty much just a, a, a rectangle like that then we have just one line here for the side like that and that becomes our balcony here and then we'll just do another shape like this underneath a couple These are the supports for the balcony, similar to this, kind of like curved lines going up. And then you can add an extra line here for the top of the balcony and an extra line down here. Okay, now at this point, let's take a break. We've done a lot of drawing, a lot of measuring. I don't want to get, you know, I always mention take break. Please take breaks. This way you can kind of like just take, take, relax for a few minutes. We've done some quite a bit of measuring. We, And if you need to even take more breaks than I'm doing, stop your tape, hit pause, and take more breaks if you need to. If you're just saying, oh, there's too many measurements, too many lines, this and that, don't worry about it. Just take your time. We're just kind of going one bit at a time. And uh, so, so far we've got a lot, actually we've got a lot done. We're almost really kind of like halfway finished now with the drawing. So we have our mast of our boat here. We have our two points of our building here. I forgot to put this line here. So this is sort of like this side of the building over here. So you have the this side of the building here, then the roof up here going on a little slight of an angle. And you have your next building here running all the way up straight like this with the cornice of the building up top. We put a little balcony here. Then we'll start to work on this on the boat down here at the bottom of the painting. Some shadows and then we'll finish up over here with maybe some more buildings in the distance over here and maybe another boat. So don't worry. We're building this one step at a time. But the key is if you want to get a really accurate, accurate drawing and uh, design and layout from the start this is the way to do it where you really can't go wrong this way because if you're watching me just do it freehand and I'm not really kind of sharing with you the measurements or anything things can go wrong on your end when you're trying to do this at home so what I'm trying to do is just if you want to take your time a little more try the ruler using the ruler and some measurements and some hash marks here and there and see if that works better for you again if it works out better for you just let me know in the comments section um, you know, give me a thumbs up if you're really thinking this is something that's really good. I'll do more of these videos where we work with the ruler. Maybe I'm not going to do it every time, but I will do it more if I get enough thumbs up. And a lot of people, a lot of you, you know, you're my students. 
we're together here. We're all artists. Let's work together. You let me know what's working, you know, to, to help you get your better, your paintings looking better. And I'm always looking to get mine uh, looking better and more polished too. So we're all in the same kind of um, boat and situation. So let's uh, work together and put our heads together on this. And uh, I'll, again, we'll take a quick break. I need a break at this point. And then we'll get finishing up on our drawing and we'll get painting. Okay. All right. Be right back. All right. So let's keep going. Again, we've um, captured quite a bit of the details that we wanted to so far. And uh, I did want to mention one thing. I think I will sort of kind of lose this line over here on this side of the building because I think I want this building to kind of flow together. So it's kind of one building. It just has a little bit of a a uh, lower floors over here and then it goes up higher over here so you can maybe you can erase this line over here that's not so important having that line there but we're going to keep going the next thing we'll let, I'd like to do is let's get the boat in so the boat here is going to come up like this so you're going to make a soft kind of angle like this And uh, you could just see that angle is something like a soft angle. That could be something um, like a very, very, um, almost like a circle. So you're kind of making a very, very small part of a circle. Like a small part of a circle of an angle here. And then we'll come down this way. Like that. And then here. So that's the boat. And this is the bow of the boat. And then we have some of the clapboards on the boat and some of the trim that's on the boat. Like this. Like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Okay, and then this is the mast. There, for the boat. And then we might have even another mast over here, or two. For boats behind, behind that we can't even see actually, they're, they're behind here. So let's just put another couple, couple masks behind here for boats that are back over here that we are seeing in the distance over here. And even another, maybe another, a few more here, just really kind of very fine lines like that. They're in the back over here. Then over here, let's, let's create another boat over here like this. Like that. Okay, so that's going to be a second boat that we'll make here, and that'll maybe just be uh, maybe a cabin cruiser, and then maybe even another boat over here in the distance over this way, like that, toward the edge there. Okay, now, at this point too, I'd like to make some distant, distant buildings over here. And I think I went too high here. Let me, let me go down a little bit lower here. Let me start them down this way here. So I'm just going to make some buildings over here, like outlines of the like this like that okay so you can kind of see how I just made the kind of the same idea over here just not as steep of an angle here more like this angle here so you can imagine the angles are going to be slight 
this way. And then as your angles are up higher in your painting, they're going to be steeper. Just something to keep in mind when you're seeing angles at, a, at the highest point of your painting for like buildings and roofs and things. The, the, the angles are steeper up at top at the roofs. You'll see the angles of the roofs very steep up here. But as you come down here, they're softer. They're not as steep. They're softer this way. And then as they come down this way, they, you know, obviously they'll get almost level. But these will be some lighter washes over here for some buildings in the distance that we have. Um, I'm just going to make it a little bit less like that. Okay, so that's some buildings over here in the distance. Then there's the water over here, so we'll have some water over here. There's a boat over here. And again, you can uh, adjust your thing, you know, your subject matter as you feel fit. Your um, boats and things. Okay. And uh, maybe this boat does have a mast here. It's a little bit off in the distance. Like that. And then there's maybe another few more masts over here for some more boats that are behind. So you kind of want to think in layers. You put some details in the background of things so that you can kind of get the feeling that there's other boats inside this uh, harbor area that we have here along the coastal areas here. All right, so now uh, the next thing I want to do is we have most of our information in. I think one more thing we want to put in is the arched uh, doorway here in our painting. And I think it's about halfway down. So the top of our, ar so we're going to make an arched doorway here. And the arched doorway is going to be halfway down between the bottom of the balcony to the bottom of the painting. So if you make the top of the arch one inch below the balcony, the bottom of the balcony, you're all set. And we said the balcony was about halfway, halfway down the painting this way. So we made our center of our painting here which we said was um, three and a half inches approximately. So if you go three and a half inches, I made my the bottom of my balcony about four inches. So my the bottom of my balcony here is four inches. So if you have your balcony here, the bottom, at four inches, and then you make your balcony a half inch high approximately, that's just about what you need. Then we're going to say that from the bottom of the balcony down to the top of that arched doorway is one inch. So we measure down one inch, we make a mark, and then we say, okay, that's our arched doorway. And then we just make our arched doorway this way, like this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, just a decent archway there. And then that's going to be where the docks are over here, and uh, so forth. And uh, then we're going to have a couple of lights and darks things over here. You can kind of make some mystery marks or mi mystery brush strokes and things like that. And then, uh, and then another thing we want to do is let's make a couple rigging lines on our mast here on our boat. Like this. So let's take some rigging lines and just make a couple light pencil lines like that. Just so we can kind of have a a guide for ourselves so that if we come back later with a rigging brush we can kind of have our rigging lines kind of set up where we know where we have to go with them. Okay, all right, and then we're, again we're going to finish up the drawing now. Um, we're going to have some darks here on the top of the boat. That might be some parts of the cabin of the boat as well as some tarps. We'll make a figure over here. Let's make a figure over here. They're working on the boat. So I'll just make the figure as a darker head and shoulders here. There, so we have some head and shoulders there. Someone's working on the boat. There, maybe we have another person up here. They're working up here on the boat. And, and then another person over here. So we'll make three figures. And all you have to do is just make basically a round darker spot, like an oval or a round shape for the head. You're going to paint it in later. You don't have to have it perfect. And you just make a little bit of a round body shape, like a top of a carrot. 
So if you can remember, if you want to make figures real easy and you don't want to get too worried about it, you could always think of it as like making a carrot top and then a small top on there like that. Or if I make it larger, carrot, kind of a top of the carrot shape. If the carrot was like this, that's the carrot shape. That's the, and then the top is the head shape there. And that's what I did here. I made three kind of like carrot shapes with the heads, except I didn't make the, the whole carrot shape. I left just the top of the carrot. So I kind of like left the top of the carrot here for my figure, figures like that. And then you can add a couple arms and, you know, kind of make it a little more detailed them, but you can start off with that carrot shape. You just remember a carrot shape with a head on there and you can tilt the head a little bit, you know, you can tilt the head a little bit this way or you make the head straight, you know, you can make it, you know, darker, uh, you can make the head darker for the hair or if you want to make the face or the front of the uh, figure, then you would just maybe make it like a, uh, you would paint it red so you wouldn't make it as dark. So if you wanted to make the front of the figure, you would make the head like so and then you would leave it white paper and then when you come back to do the painting you'd paint this in like a flesh color kind of like a red you know or like a flesh tone like an orangey red orangey yellow red and this would be if you want to make the darker hair so here I made these figures um, a little bit more or less like they're working um, and they're looking away from us but you could you can make that easily uh, them looking forward towards us by just lifting up a little bit of your pencil lines there and that's and that's all so remember that's you have the choice so i hope you're having a fun time so far we're going to start painting in just a second now i know it's a lot of work before we start painting but trust me if you work on your design and you're careful about it and you let's just say not that you have to use the ruler like i said before but if you are using a ruler and you're following along with me and we're kind of going along carefully with each other with our rulers and measuring laying out things carefully it does take a little more time but then you have a really crisp nice accurate drawing and then when you go into paint yes you might have an issue with a wash or two or you might have a little bit of a splash or a smudge don't worry about that but once you go in and you do your painting you, you're going to find that it's going to look really good because you have like the the real blueprint of what you want to do already on your paper and then you're just sort of going in and putting in the beautiful colors and it's going to kind of automatically look good because you have the everything kind of laid out really nicely accurately and uh, as much as you want and then you know you'll you will find that it's going to really look very pleasant very pleasing looking the, the composition the painting so let's not delay any further let's get into the painting next the next thing we'll do We'll mix up some colors and we'll figure out what colors we're going to use. We'll come up with a color scheme. We'll mix it all up in our palette first. And then we're just going to transfer it right over into the painting. And before you know it, the painting the painting is going to be finished. It'll look fantastic. And again, the key at this point now too is we're going to mix our colors first before we go in and paint. So that we're not kind of like guessing as we're going what colors we're going to use. We're going to put all the colors in first. Figure it out before we start. What colors we need on the palette. For the most part, 90% of it, and then that's all we have to do now is just take the colors, transfer it over, and have fun, and put the washes in, and you'll see it really does come to life and look really beautiful. So <laughs> let's come right back in a second or two and get finished here. Um, I know it's like more fun to get the painting uh, get started, so that's what we'll do next. All right, so let's start painting, and uh, let's get our paints mixed up uh, in the palette. I'll probably just start out with... Um, a number uh, eight um, Da Vinci travel brush. It's got the uh, Kalinsky sable hair brush. Um, fresh clean water. So I, I most of the times I'll use my um, Holbein Holbein uh, collapsible container, water container. I, I keep it over to the right side over here on the right side of my uh, working table. Fresh clean water. I use a spritzer bottle, usually a Holbein spritzer bottle. I usually just spritz the paint a little bit before I start. These are tube paints. I usually keep these in a plastic bag, so I just basically I fold up. Before I fold up my palette, I put a piece of paper towel in there like that. 
So when I'm done painting right now, in about half an hour to an hour when we're done, I'll take a piece of paper towel, small, thin piece of paper towel, just tore up, you know, tore a little small tiny piece, put it in there. Then I take my um, spritzer bottle, spritz that with a little bit of paint, and then I just fold up my palette, and then I put it in a uh, plastic bag, Ziploc bag, fold it all up, zip it close, and then I put it in a small uh, mini refrigerator in my studio. Um, I also, in the winter time, when it's cool out, I'll just put it on the windowsill in my in my studio because it stays cool there. And uh, that's it. It's really that simple to keep my uh, paints moist and and always ready to go when we're painting. And uh, okay, that's just tidbit of information on my palette. But now let's kind of get into the colors here. So um, I think I want to make this more of a warmer painting. There'll be some warm and cool everywhere in the painting, but it's going to be maybe a little more warmer, especially in the foreground here. And then in the distance, we'll make it a little cooler, and I'll kind of explain how we're going to mix our colors. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to kind of look to myself, say, well, what are going to be the predominant colors? These, these are beautiful buildings along the coastline here, along the water, the harbor that we're painting. So let's get some warmer colors in here. I'm going to use raw umber, some burnt sienna, some raw umber, burnt sienna. Um, I might add some French ultramarine blue over here for some of the cooler. Uh, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of um, mineral violet, purple, so purple and blue. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue too, cobalt blue, then maybe a little bit of cerulean blue over here too. So I'll try to get my cooler colors over here and I'll, my predominant warmer colors I'll keep over on the right hand side. And I always usually keep a tissue in my uh, left hand and I'll dry off a little bit of water off my brush as I work, like that. But that's going to be kind of the colors we're going to use. Kind of the blues, a little bit of purple again, mineral violet, purple. But let's mix our colors out on the, on the palette first before we start working. So that we have everything figured out. And you did see the f finished painting right when we started. So the best thing to do if you can is to maybe do a screen capture, screenshot of the finished painting when you first start. Maybe take that and then you save that. And then you might put that, save the picture and then keep that picture on your phone or your iPad or your computer or your laptop. Use that as your your reference material as you're painting this painting along. And you know, so that, that, that seems to be the best way to do it. And then, um, and again, a little bit of French ultramarine blue up on this side over here. Burnt sienna over here. Raw umber over here. Even a little bit of raw sienna too. Over here like this. Okay, so now we kind of have a good idea of what we want to do here. Then for our mast, dark brown. So we need some darker dark brown. French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. A little bit of burnt sienna too in there. That'll be our mask color. So we're going to get some really good darks too. So let's make our darkest darks right here on this side. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. That can be our darkest darks right there. So now you can kind of see in our palette here we have our darkest darks right here. French ultramarine, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna. You can get that really, really gorgeous dark. That's going to be not too many of the dark darks in this painting. But just a little bit of that but mostly it's going to be the other lighter and middle tones of the blues and the warmer tones the, over here we used uh, raw umber burnt sienna a little bit of a yellow ochre and raw sienna too over here and then we have a little bit of french ultramarine blue up here and then down here a little bit of it with a little bit of french ultramarine violet purple and then over here we had our um, Rinse off the brush. Cerulean blue up here <clears throat> with a little bit of uh, mineral violet here, like that. And if you have these colors put onto your palette, you're, you're, that's fine. You're going to be set. Now, what I'd like to say too is we're going to use the glazing technique. So now with the glazing technique, it's a little different. You're just going to want to remember to maybe just lighten up a few lines if you want. Lighten up a few lines with your uh, eraser if you want to you don't have to if you like pencil lines leave them on in there <laughs> it's up to you but what i'm going to do is 
now I'm going to shift to a larger. This is a Da Vinci uh, flat brush or square brush, 30 millimeters. So this is 30 millimeters flat brush. I'm going to take the whole painting and just w get some water on there. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. I like using this. Maybe I won't even, I'm not even going to worry about that. Let's just stick with the one. Let's actually, let's just, let's go with a little bit of a larger brush. Uh, I'm going to go with the number 12 travel brush. So I have travel brushes. I like those a lot. So this is the number eight we just started with to mix our colors. Now we have a number 12 travel brush. Same thing, Da Vinci, da Vinci uh, Pure Klinsky travel brush. Number 12, quite a bit larger. We'll use that to get our, but you could use a large flat brush, which works just as great. And I really enjoy these Da Vinci flat brushes. They're fantastic. I use them a lot in my paintings. You'll see me use this a lot. But for this painting, I just want to maybe keep it more simplified. We're just going to use basically like two sizes of the travel brush, the uh, 12 and the 8. So the 12 we're going to use right now to get the, the first bit of um, fresh, clean water on our paper. So we're doing the glazing technique, technique, which means we're going to wet the paper first. Lightly, not too much water, just enough to get your whole paper damp. You want, a, you want a damp paper all the way through. So you get your paper damp all the way through. And then you could add a little extra water up top here top of the painting if you want a little extra water there and then you go right in and get your cerulean blue like that and start getting your cool sky color in there that looks good oh maybe a little bit of the green in there Ver verde and green add in a little verde and green just pick up a touch of verde and green maybe a little bit of that and then just kind of Blow these cool colors on down. All the way down the painting. That cool, cool wash. French ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue up here in this, up here in this portion there okay and that's all you have to do and then once you do that and and then you can leave the, the the building a little lighter so if you want to lift up a little bit of water and paint from your building areas you can do that just maybe a little bit from over here where the boats are and the water down here but that should be fine now you're gonna let this dry 100% at this point you can use a blow dryer or you can let it dry naturally for about an hour or two. So it's up to you. Okay. I'm going to use the blow dryer so I can come right back and keep working here. And um, But it's up to you if you want to take a break. And maybe you have to do a few things and you want to come back in a few hours. Maybe you have a couple errands you have to do. You have to take care of some things. You might have to go out, do some shopping, whatever it is. You can always... Do a wash like this for your glazing technique, which is your first wash, is that real light wash over the whole paper. Let that dry 100%, and then you come back and do our darker washes over the top. So again, it's up to you. If you want to keep working, you can get a blow dryer, blow dry off this wash, good, until it's 100% dry. Or again, you can let it dry naturally for about you know a couple hours, and, and you should be fine. All right, so let's come right back, and we'll get uh, started again with some of the darker washes. All right, so we're going to get started on our second wash. We did our first glazing, so we're doing our second glazing now. A little bit of the darker washes. Let's get uh, rolling here. Um, so I would say that um, on the second wash, let's get some of the warmer colors here. And I'm going to come right up top here and start right up at the le left side of the painting. I'm right-handed, so it's easy for me to work up this way and we're going to get our warmer colors and you can kind of see I'm using my reds the warmer colors like the burnt sienna raw umber 
little bit of the darker darks too up here maybe maybe right up at the top here I might use some of those darker darks no big deal rinse off the brush dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel and then come back in and get some of the warmer colors like this then I might rinse off the brush again dry off a little bit of the water off the brush on a tissue and then just kind of make this a little bit lighter so we're going to kind of start to create the feeling of light in the painting the lights coming from this direction from over here I always mention please try to try to put a light insignia in your painting if you can I like to do it I always try to do it up here you might put the light insignia like this which kind of looks like a spotlight like that and then you put the little bulb in there and the light like this just so we kind of know the lights coming from the right side over here and coming this way and then I'm just going to keep working these warmer colors over here and uh, there's I would say it's a little bit darker along this part of the building here on the very outside corner and then it also kind of blends in with the sky there a little bit and we'll keep aware that there's going to be some warm and cool shadows under the under the uh, balcony here like that so I'll put a little bit of that shadow color under there like so and then there's also a really nice dark here where the little bit of uh, burnt sienna French ultramarine blue And then you can kind of work, uh, kind of round out your your arch with your brush. So your brush is like you can. That's why I always say, don't worry about your pencil sketch. A lot of times, if things don't look perfect when you're doing your pencil sketch, don't worry at all, because once you come in and you start working with your brush, when you start working with your brush, you, you're able to use your brush as like a almost like a uh, like a tool. Uh, if you're doing sculpture or something, you're able to sculpt uh, shapes and things with your your brush and make things look better as you go. So you can actually make things look better and you don't have to worry as much. And then over here there's some more warm colors here for the building so this this building is warm kind of like that really beautiful like yellow ochre kind of color for the building you could blot up a little bit of color and then I can just go right off the page here with the shadow that shadow you can add some purple and then some more shadow over here on the uh, not too much though just a little bit of shadow on the uh, balcony here and the balcony should be warm too Okay. Okay. Looks good. Now we'll, we'll raw umber. Some more raw umber. We'll just mix the same colors, raw umber, burnt sienna. And we'll start getting in our boat colors. Here our boat color, burnt umber too. Okay, 
and then this boat over here is a little darker. I'll try to just do everything I can, you know I can with this brush. I don't want to use too many different size brushes. So I'll, I'll do this boat over here with this brush too. Like that. And then over here, this boat in the background over here is a little lighter, so I'll go with some French Ultramarine Blue. And this brown, so brown and French Ultramarine Blue. And we'll get that boat in like that. Like so. And that looks fine. Okay, so we're going to keep working our, our darks. as we go. We're going to do some green for water. And that's Viridian Green. And let the watercolors mix and mingle a little bit. Don't worry if you some of your edges blend a little bit. Don't worry. Let it go. Let it just be, let watercolor do what it's going to do. Okay. And then over here, um, what else do we have? Let's do some of these buildings over here. So that's going to be French Ultramarine Blue, Cerulean Blue, a little bit of the Verdian Green, and then a little bit of the Raw Umber too. So we'll have Warm and Cool over here. And I would just say, let's go with Like that. Get some wash on there and then blend it down. And some blue, some cerulean blue. And I'll mix in a little bit of that raw umber there too, just to kind of mix up that. We don't want to have it all the same kind of like color. Let's do some purple in there too. Purple over here, some purple over here, add a little bit of purple. Mix the colors up, but these are pretty light over here. Okay, and then you can even blot this up a little bit with a little bit of tissue. Get a fresh, clean tissue sometimes. Like that. Okay. Then you can go back in and charge in some darker wash. Maybe here and there a little bit, just to... But way better to have these buildings on the right-hand side lighter. As you can see, we we created these a lot, you know, a lot, quite a bit lighter. And then the closer things are to us, these are the darker areas here. This is closest to us here, and then these buildings here are in the further distance. So we're making these like bluer and greener, you know, cooler colors, blue and green. But you still want to have a little bit of the warm colors in there too. So a touch of warm colors in there, but not as much. Mostly cool colors in the distance. So you're, you're when you're trying to create distance in your painting, does this make sense? When you're making distant buildings and distant subject matter in your paintings, if you make it cooler with a little more blue, a little more green, but you still add in a little bit of warm colors too, maybe a touch of it, but mostly predominantly blue or greenish color, and lighter in tonal value too, not too strong, too much paint, a little less paint, a little more water. You get that feeling, that disty, distant, misty kind of look in the distance there for that for these buildings back here. I think that looks good. And then um, all we have left really now is to do our um, finish up our figures in the boat and our masts of our boat and some of the rigging. And I think we're really kind of all set and and uh, really we'll have our painting completed like within you know the next uh, five or ten minutes or so. 
and I'm hoping you're enjoying this painting. And I always say, if you enjoy my paintings, you enjoy these tutorials, please subscribe on the right-hand side below. It's really all it does is it keeps you in contact with us because we're working every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. We're always here working with you. I'm working with you here constantly on YouTube so that we all create better artwork. We're always working, getting better, perfecting our methods, our techniques in watercolor. So if you subscribe below, it's just um, going to kind of just keep you in contact with us. You'll be way more likely to keep working with us, watching our videos, watching my videos, um, practicing along with the videos. Sometimes you can't always work with us, you know, work with me. I understand that. Some We all have busy schedules, but if you're at least watching the videos, you're going to be learning a lot of tech, you know, technical terms, the terms of watercolor, watercolor painting and drawing, all the different design techniques, all these other things that you um, see in my videos, if you're just watching the videos, you're going to learn a lot by just absorbing that information and it'll help you tremendously in your painting. Um, so even if you can't paint and you don't have time to break out all your paints and papers and brushes and everything, don't worry about it. At least watch the videos and then when you have time, you can go back and paint the favorite paintings that you want to paint on my channel. Or if you know you really want to go for it, then do it each week. Work along here with each of the videos and, and paint and draw along with us and paint and create um, and keep practicing your compositions and your paintings and your techniques, practicing your techniques and getting better and better. No matter what, you're going to get better. If, if, if At a minimum, if you're watching, you're going to be getting better because you're going to be absorbing the information and learning it. And it's going to be coming, uh, you know, more um, to the forefront of your mind when you're actually working and, and drawing and painting and watercolor. So if you're just seeing the information again and watching the videos... You're going to be way better off. But if you're painting along with this and, and drawing along, great. That's even better yet. So whatever you can do. I know everyone can't always paint every time we get together. That's totally understandable. And sometimes I have to take breaks and take a week off or something like that and put on an old video that I did a year ago or something like that on my channel. So don't worry about it. Do what you can. Do the best you can. And we're going to get started uh, again in about a few minutes or so. And we'll finish up this painting. And um, again... If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bells, all notifications. It's the top bell on the notifications bell and uh, section when you click on subscribe. And this way, you don't miss a thing. I don't want you to miss any of our information. Um, okay, all right. So let's get started in just a second or two. Um, finishing up this painting. It's been fun, and we're, you're going to see how it all comes together now when we do our last bit of dark darks and um, some of our last bit of details. Well, we are finishing up. Let's get started again. Um, let's get our uh, dark uh, masks in first. Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, and Burnt Sienna. And I'm using uh, just a damp brush, a, an extremely damp brush. I actually took my brush, I dried off the brush with, um, paper, uh, with tissue. So I took the br brush rinsed it off in my water bucket, dried off the water on my tissue, then I went in and got the paint. French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, with almost no water at all on my brush. And that is, that's how we're going to actually get this dark mast for this boat in, without having water flooding all over the paper or not being able to control the... Um, the line that we're going to create now, this mast of this boat. So this is something really important. I've covered this too, you know, many videos I've covered, you know, uh, doing vertical lines, uh, like masts of boats or, or tree trunks, tree limbs, things like that. So we're just going to keep going over it. And many of you already have it uh, mastered and you're, you know, doing fine with it. But I always like to mention it too. Some of you are kind of new. Maybe you're um, just starting on my videos and you haven't been with me for a while. I just like to mention things, you know, occasionally once in a while over and over so that it's really, you know, we have to kind of always remember that there's new people that come in and watch our videos. So some of you that are old pros and you've been with me a long time, thank you for being patient and not worrying about maybe covering some things we've already covered before because um, some of the newer people that are coming in, they're hungry for knowledge and they want to really create beautiful paintings too, just like you. And then, so let's... Uh, we'll take that into account as we work along here again. Like I said, um, I just rinsed off my brush. Still using my number eight uh, Da Vinci travel brush. 
rinsed off my brush with clean, fresh, clean water, took the fresh, clean water, and then took, you know, put this brush onto the tissue to dry off the water so that it's just basically a damp brush, if that, not even damp. It's almost almost dry brush. This is almost like a dry brush right now. After I dry off all the water, then I go in and get my paints again. You can already have this pre-mixed, but you don't want prob you probably don't want any water at all in your paint at this point. Now at the end of the painting, when we're doing some of our darks, you don't want water, any kind of water in your paint. You just want straight paint, straight French ultramarine blue, straight burnt umber, straight burnt sienna, and again, no water in your brush hairs. And then you can even dry off to be even safer, dry off some of your paint on your tissue first. And then you can start doing maybe like, you know, just a little bit at a time to do your mast. Start, go maybe like, a, you know, a little bit at a time like that. And then you just move your hand up, keep your hand resting on the paper. Make sure it's all dry. So we made sure this was all dry. We used a blow dryer. So now when we're doing our final details to our painting, our darkest darks, our masts, our rigging lines for our boat, some of our figures. This is the very, very last stage of the painting. We're just remembering that we're going to really make sure that everything is completely dry now so that we can rest our hand on the paper like this. So now I'm resting my hand on the paper and I'm just doing my the mast with my hand resting on the paper and I'm just painting maybe uh, an inch or two at a time like that. And I just let it doesn't have to be solid line. You can leave some of the line hit and miss. So hit and miss, I just mean leave some white paper in there. Don't You don't have to paint every single bit of the line. That means it'll look better. It'll look like lights bouncing off it. It'll look more three-dimensional too. And there we go. There we have our first mast. And the reason we were able to create a really beautiful straight perfectly, you know, almost perfectly vert vertical mast for our boat, sailboat, is we did it first with our ruler when we did our drawing. And when we did our drawing with our ruler, and I think we used our metal ruler here on this mast, since we did that, now when we go to paint this, we have those perfect lines that we're going to use. And then it's just a matter of keeping our hand resting on the paper, really good and strong, solid, and just going a little bit at a time and getting that line going and just keep it going. Again, let some of it just be dry brushy where you can see kind of some white paper through there. You don't want to make it one solid line. Don't feel like you have to ever make anything one solid line. Let things be a little bit mysterious in your paintings. And then we'll do another one over here. And this one over here is smaller, so it works out good. We start out with thicker lines first with our brush to get our first thick mast. And then we don't even have to get any more paint because the paint's sort of diminishing off the brush hairs, which means that when we do our thinner mass over here in the distance or the next ones behind this one, it's easier to paint because we have less paint on that brush, which means it goes on easier and we're not going to be likely to make a smudge or have too much paint on that line. And again, leave some of the line missing. Don't. I almost make dashed lines. Dashed lines look fine. If you can do some dashed lines in your paintings, I think that's good. You'll let me know in the comments section what you have found as you're painting and working. Thank you so much for your comments. I know many of you leave comments all the time in my channel. Thank you for that. That means other people are reading your comments and they're learning from them and absorbing what you're saying and then they're going to use that for their paintings and their paintings are going to look better. So always remember when you contribute in the comment section, other people are, are really taking seriously what you're saying because you're you're doing the work and you're sharing what you, works for you and then people are going to try that out and then they're going to find that it works too. And then they're going to have a better time and an easier time painting. So again, I'm just doing some of these darks like we said. We're at the final stages now. Um, we're going to have a little bit of blue and purple here. So now I'm going to shift gears and go with a little bit of a medium tone here on this side of the boat, up here. 
because this is in shadow over here. So the, the left side of things are in shadow. And then the light we set up here, we made our light insignia. Light's coming from this direction. So it's going to be darker over here, over on this side. Like that. A little bit of dark. There, a little bit of dark shadow there. And there's a little bit of color there. A little bit of uh, very light wash there, just on the, like that. And if you want to add some light to an area that you've already painted over, you can just wet the paper with a little bit of clean water. And you can take some tissue and then just blot up an area like this. And then you can make that look more like it's got some light shining on it. We didn't get a whole lot there, but it looks a little better. And then we could add a little bit of a darker wash over here. Okay. And um, I did notice over here this could be darker. And then if you wanted to, you can always take your tissue or your paper towel and you can make, you can fold up your paper towel, your tissue, and make a little bit of a point on it like this. So if you want to lift up a little bit of a spot there, like that. We can use some white paint there too later if we want to. But yeah, we're actually just finishing up now, so we... We're not going to worry too much. Um, I'll use a needlepoint brush now. And some of the blue, grayish blue colors. Like this. And then what I'll do is I'll take that and then I'll dry it off on a tissue a little bit. And then we'll just do some masks over here. I'll just do the same thing we did before, and then the some. So there's there's other masks over here. There's other boats. Um, you can make it a little darker if you want. This over here might be a little darker, and you don't worry if it goes over. Just a couple masks, and then some rigging lines here. I'm just going to do some rigging lines here. And again, I'm resting my hand on the paper. And I'm leaving some spaces. So I don't make one solid line everywhere. I kind of leave some and that should be fine. Make a couple burgies up here. Okay, and then maybe we can add a little more details here. So now either here's where you can add some details with the um needlepoint brush. Um, I would also make my figures now. So I can use my colors that I used here for the flesh tones and we can make the flesh tones here. We can make some arms.
maybe a couple, one figure has um, one figure is uh, has um, he's not worrying about a shirt or whatever. A couple of these other figures they have their shirts on, their t-shirts and whatever else they're working on the boat but I think that looks fine just enough detail where you can kind of see some figures on the boat some sailors they're working on the boat and um, we have um, some fun looking details in here and then we can also take um, a little bit of warm and cool warm and cool like this and what I'll try to do is um, I'll just try to make a few um, other details in the building here. So we're going to make it like a maybe a window over here, something like that. And over here, there might be more of a shadow like that. So I could just put a quick shadow like that underneath there. Maybe there's a little bit of a darker shadow there. So you can start to go in now and add a few shadows if you want to. Or extra washes just to... And then I think up here, burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of French ultramarine blue. Um, maybe we'll make a window up here. So we'll just make another... We'll make a window over here like this by the uh, balcony. A little bit of an angle to that, like that. We're looking good now. Let's get a couple more details. Uh, I want to maybe make a couple reflections like this. Just a couple little things in the water. Maybe over here too. Make these a little bit lighter. Like this for the boat. A couple of... Uh, couple of reflections of the mass. And I hope you've enjoyed this. We've had a lot of fun. Um, I think this is good. I think we can just let this be as it is. Um, sometimes overworking things too much can be a problem. Um, you might be able to go in and add a few maybe highlight colors here. Just maybe some blue and red. Add some color to it. Maybe this figure here is uh, got a little more a little more red. We'll make a little more some some reddish highlights here for the figures. That looks better. You can also take a little bit of highlight, a little bit of white highlight, which is um, a little bit of yellow ochre. Take a little bit of yellow ochre and dip your brush in that and put it into the top of some titanium white. So here I'm using titanium white, tube of titanium white, a little bit of yellow ochre in the top of the paint, just a tiny bit. Mix it in there just a tiny bit. And then we can use another tissue, dry off that a little bit so we don't have too much paint on there and then you can actually add a few highlights there we go we got a highlight there on the boat maybe another yeah that looks good right look at that a couple little highlights looks fantastic 
Uh, where else? Over here, maybe? On some of the shoulders of the uh, figures, possibly. Figures look pretty good the way they are, I think. Maybe up here. Like that. Highlight up there. Anywhere else, maybe over here, too? For this boat. And then maybe over here, too. Like that. And maybe over here as well. You can always add a little bit of highlights, That's, but not too many, just a few. And that should look fine. Like that. All right, thanks again for watching. I'm hoping you had a great time painting with us. We're doing more paintings just like this week after week, month after month, and year after year on my channel here. So as long as you're working along with this on a constant basis, you're always going to be creating better paintings. You're going to be creating better drawings. And um, I also, too, I always mention, practice a little bit of drawing each day, 10, 5, 10 minutes a day. Scratch on a little pad of paper, maybe grab a piece of printer paper, draw a couple drawings every day, just something, anything, a coffee cup, a teacup, um, you know, maybe an apple, an orange, a banana, whatever it is, something, food type things, a bowl, a box of cereal, um, you know, every, you know, pencil, pens, pens and pencils are great to draw. Grab it, grab any old thing you can, just put it on the table um, and, and just, and just try to draw a few things every day, you know, five, 10 minutes. If you do that, you, you'll see your drawing skills go way off the charts. And, uh, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want to be able to kind of draw, uh, really efficiently. And it's just as, it's just as fantastic to draw with rulers and, and use measurements as you're doing your, your, um, paintings. Cause that's really how the great masters of of history painted. They painted very accurately. They use measurements. They use tracing. They use rulers. They did everything. They used everything that they could to, to try to create, um, you know, a realistic representation of what they were looking at, as well as the colors too. They tried to match the colors the best they could. And then uh, there's different styles too, but I'm saying for people that were painting great artists of, of time, you know, from, from the, um, from, from historical records, we know that the people that were trying to create a more realistic representation of, of uh, what they were seeing, they were using all your standard things we would use, rulers, straight edges, they would trace things just to get a beautiful, really good looking painting and composition. And they always worked hard too to get good colors and good light and darks, shadows and light. So let's keep doing those things, the fundamentals of watercolor. Okay. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks again for coming by and uh, we'll see you on the next video.